Today we're gonna start a reading vlog for the month of October. We're gonna be reading some spooky books. I'm coming at you from the future, so I've already read all of these books. I ended up reading a lot of vampire-leaning books, which was not like the goal at first. It just ended up happening that way. Yeah, some spooky things. I read a Victorian book. October is also Victober, which I totally, totally forgot about. Yeah, I read a couple of classics, a couple of modern fantasy. I do read a horror, which was different for me, but you'll see what I thought of that when I get to it. I read Grady Hendrix's Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I did go on a trip in the middle of October and I did move in the middle of October. So I'm currently visiting my mom's house. So you still see my bookshelves, but my room looks completely different. <laughs> yes, so a lot going on in the month of October that I actually did not film, which is kind of why the filming's a little bit sporadic. Um, I hope you had a great October. Let's, let's get into it. to show you what I got at Bath and Body Works real quick. Hey, okay, and then I wanted to go drop off some books at a little free library because I am in the process of getting rid of things. Yay! Um, and what better time to do it than fall? You know, spring cleaning, fall cleaning, <laughs> all the same. I decided to get some hand wash. Hand wash, hand soap, same thing. I got the pumpkin cupcake because it smells so freaking good. Also, the best fall smell from Bath and Body Works is hands down leaves oh for sure so i got it in the hand soap version i didn't get the candle although i almost did i just didn't know if it would be too pungent for the space that it would be in but anyway um i saw this flavor or scent apricots and green fig which just smells kind of fresh it just smells fresh almost it smells like fresh fall and then i got a small size of the marshmallow fireside this smells so good this is one of my favorite smells ever oh my gosh it smells so good when it's like raining outside beautiful okay so back in my room let's pick which books i want to drop off at the little free library there's a massive stack here that i've been trying to slowly get rid of and bring to the little free library let's go with this the fall time I'm just thinking classics. Ooh, atmospheric. I have all these classics just in different editions now. So let's drop off Pride and Prejudice, shall we? In this really cool 60s style. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I just think these are super cute, but I don't need them anymore, so I'm going to get rid of them. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. We have A Persuasion by Jane Austen. Yeah, let's get rid of those. This is also kind of fall vibes. We have The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. Kind of spooky. We'll drop that off. What else should we drop off? Fall vibes. I don't know. Th this kind of reminds me of fall. Just the co cover. Catapult by Emily Fridland. These are stories. Would people want that at a little free library, though? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just trying to think of things I know will definitely fit in there. We'll just put that in because I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it. What else do we have? Okay. We also have some of these. Let's just drop them off, okay? We have Girl with the Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. That was actually a really good book, but I'm definitely getting rid of it. And we have Assembly by Natasha Brown. Um, which was also great, but I'm going to get rid of it. And I also think a lot of people should read that. So that's a good thing to put there. I think that's probably as much as will fit. But we're also going to bring A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. I liked this romance. I'm just, again, never going to reread it. And I really need to start getting rid of a bunch of things. And these are just the piles that I have here now. And I have a lot to go through on my shelves. Yikes. Okay, so we'll bring this stack to my little free library. We'll go for a little walk. Hopefully they all fit.
forgot to update you guys while I was reading it, but I have finished A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, and I ended up giving this four stars. I ended up giving this four stars. It wasn't anything that blew my mind, okay? Nothing that blew my mind. So many people online said this was their favorite book of the year when they read it. A lot of people in, or a few people in real life that I know have read, read this book said it was their favorite book of the year when they read it. I also had another friend in real life read it and she said it, she agreed with me. She was like, yeah, it was good, but it didn't blow my mind. Basically it's about, I think it's a retelling of the wives of Dracula. Um, so it's about this old vampire who turns our main narrator into a vampire when she's like young and dying and they're that's his wife now their husband and wife and then as years and years and years i don't know probably centuries it made it sound like go on they get um, another wife and then they get another husband so it's like a vampire harem basically i have two things that i want to say and then we'll pick our next read this book well maybe i have three things that i want to say okay this book first is all about um, toxic relationships, obviously controlling relationships, finding autonomy. It's kind of about having, it's like they all have Stockholm Syndrome basically. Also, I also found it interesting, so that was the first thing that I wanted to say. Second thing that I found interesting and weird, I thought it was weird, there's three people in the relationship that's not like the main head vampire that turned them all. And we hear from our main narrator, whose name is Constanta. That's who we hear from for the majority of the novel. And then at the end, I think like the last 30-ish pages, we hear from the guy. I forget his name. Alexi. We hear from Alexi, and then Magdalena is the name of the other female. And we don't hear from her. Which I think is really interesting because I'd like to hear her perspective. I thought that hearing from Alexi's perspective actually really added to the story. I think it would have been cool to kind of get a little vignette, at least from her perspective. It's very almost vignette-y, which I think lended to its artistic value. I think it was really trying to say something about controlling relationships, toxic relationships. Um, and it just happened to use vampires as the... Uh, source material for that. I think those were really my main thoughts. Four stars, thought it was great, um, didn't blow my mind, change my life, but a really good solid read and it's super interesting. I've been reading a lot of vampire books recently. Not on purpose, not on purpose, but now maybe let's make it on purpose. I don't really know. Let's pick our next fall spooky time read. I have a pile I have a pile. Let's go through it. So I don't know if you can see because there are some books behind it, but this is my primary pile for this video that I think are, I don't know, these books just remind me of fall. So that's what we're going with. We could go for Dracula by Bram Stoker. I don't know if I'm in the mood to really commit to this long Victorian novel yet. Maybe we'll feel it Later. I have a flight in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll take that on a flight. I don't know. We have Perfume by Patrick Suskind, Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu, which I'm kind of leaning towards again because it's like the original vampire novel and it's beautiful and I guess we're going again for the vampire theme. I should mention, oh my gosh, you can see me. Hey, I should mention I am listening to Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. I've been listening to it for like, I'm like five to six hours into it and I can't say it's my favorite thing. Which, I guess a lot of the Dark Academia girlies really like it. I don't consider myself a Dark Academia girly. I don't know. What do I want to say about Interview with a Vampire? More to come. More to come when I hear more. When I listen to more. This is another vampire. The Southern uh, Vampire Book. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying vampires okay I think I really think vampires are the vibe so I kind of want another quick read so Watson and I decided those were my books Watson and I decided that I will be reading Carmilla Okay, up 
update time. So I have finished Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. I'm a little under the weather, so sorry if I sound different. But I finished um, Carmilla. I liked Carmilla. I didn't love it. I didn't think that it was mind blowing. This is like said to be the story that inspired Dracula. Old, yeah, it's from 1871. And um, like I said, it was said to be the story that inspired Dracula. It's based on basically like teenage girls living in at this time. Our main narrator, we hear her and she kind of wants like a, a, a companion, girlfriend companion. Um, there are some elements of sapphic romance going on, but not, I mean, yes, I think it can be implied, but not explicitly by any means. Basically this girl that comes and stays with her is like a vampire essentially and they're trying to figure out what's going on there's like a mystery in the town and um all these young women are are getting kind of sick and dying um but it's an interesting different take on a vampire i guess it's like one of the original takes on a vampire it's interesting to see where the lore has like evolved from really i think my favorite thing about reading this book is that i haven't read a story like a classic in a while so it was really nice to be in the world of that language um, and I thought that it was really beautifully written and what have you so I enjoyed it for that reason I gave it three stars it was fine it didn't blow my mind since then I have started reading the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I am on page 100 of this book. I think that it's really well written. I think it's a really engaging story. However, I'm super nervous to continue reading it. So it's set in the 80s, 90s, and it's about this group of moms, essentially, who get together and have a book club. And they basically read true crime. I'm really not a fan of true crime. I'm not a fan of uh, thrillers, mysteries, murders, things like that. Why am I reading this, do you ask? Because it's Grady Hendrix. I've seen this around everywhere. It's October. And I just kind of want to, I just kind of want to see. I've also heard that Grady Hendrix is safe to read if you're um, kind of a scaredy cat or if you don't like, t typically like horror thriller things because it's more campy. I also have heard that he uses those like horror tropes and themes to discuss a larger uh, thematic issue. I think a, a lot of this story really primarily has to do with lack of value placed in mothers, women at home, especially at this time, but I th this could apply to any time, and these women just not being taken seriously and not being appreciated and all that they have to do and go through and in their relationships with their husbands, each other as friends, and their relationships with their children, and uh, just the community that they're in. I think that's really what this book is about, but it's using horror, thriller tropes to discuss that. That being said, I still think that this might not be for me. And um, there have been a lot of like, I, I just think this might not be for me. I'm just not, I'm not into, I'm not into the thriller, horror, true crime vibes. And this really is, even in the foreword, Grady Hendrix, Grady Hendrix has done a fantastic job. This is, I can tell, very well written, good, solid book. I would definitely recommend it um, based off what I've read thus far. But they did write in the beginning that the vampire is the original serial killer, which is so true when you think about it. And this book is really written, it's not written like a vampire. It's really, it really is written like a, a new guy comes to town who's creepy, he's a serial killer. Um, there's nothing vampiric really about it so far. I mean, kind of, there have been moments. Anyway, so I don't know if it's for me. I think I'm going to give it a few more pages, maybe like 25 to 50 pages, and see if I, I feel like I am up to continuing with it. Because I do think that it is going to be a good, I do think it's a good story. I think it's very well written. I could see how people love this. And I really admire it, but at the same time, I just recognize that it might, it really might throw me off and like put me in the wrong headspace. And I've, it's been like oh, two weeks, but I did go out of town 
in that time, I went to Washington State to visit with family. I didn't film any of that because I was just in the moment, you know what I mean? While I was on the plane, I did finish reading The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which I think that was the last thing I told you guys about. I wasn't sure if I was going to DNF it or not. I ended up finishing The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I think I gave it three stars. I actually really appreciate that book. I actually really like what it was doing. I think that Grady Hendrix is a really solid author actually. I actually ended up giving the book to my mom because I think that she will really like it. It's set in the late 80s, 90s. It's about a group of moms in the south and they have a book club where they read um, crime fiction or true crime. I'm really not into true crime at all. Just FYI, but it's not really about true crime. Basically, this new guy comes to town. One of the moms is suspicious about him, thinks he's a bad guy, and is harming children and like causing them to, to die, basically. Um, he's a vampire, but it's really about, in the book he's a vampire, but it's really about a serial killer kind of coming to town. And the husband's not taking the wives seriously and um, how strong mothers actually are. I actually think that the foreword of that book was really, really great. I'd really rec recommend reading it. It's like a page and a half that Grady Hendrix wrote down. Yeah, it's just about how women are gaslit. Nobody takes women seriously. They think they're hysterical, um, but they're actually really strong, powerful, and intelligent. Um, so that's kind of basically what the, that book was about. Since then, picked up The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which I did DNF, okay? So I made it like 50 pages into that book and I hated it. I hated it. I think I just recently, I just recently made a video talking about fantasy books that I was um, hoping to read soon or I was really interested in reading soon. The Cruel Prince was on that list because I thought it would be kind of a similar vibe to what Fourth Wing was like in that it um, was an addictive, YA leaning, hate to love fantasy romance. That's what it is, but it was just so bad to me. Like I just couldn't with that book. I just, I just really couldn't. I just really, I just genuinely couldn't. I also moved in that time. So this is where I live now. This is my new home. I don't live where I used to live. So I will have a completely different background. I'm gonna make a video soon about all the books that I took with me here because I could not bring all of my books by any means. I have so many books and I do need to get rid of a lot of them. Um, I moved out of my mom's house, so I still have those books in my room there, but I need to get rid of a lot of them soon-ish in the next few-ish months. So yeah, that's that. But I will make a video soon about all the books that I did bring with me here. I'm planning on reading some and cycling them out depending on what they are. Anywho, what I am currently reading, I decided to pick up that was not in that stack my TBR stack that I kind of made for this video. So we have The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Um, I've never read a Wilkie Collins. This is my first Wilkie Collins. This is a Victorian class classic. It's also Victober, which kind of inspired me to pick this up. The Moonstone, which is about, it's about the Moonstone Diamond, which is a celebrated Indian yellow diamond. Um, and it's stolen from India. Preface of this story is uh, basically the history of the diamond. Um, it was cursed by a god to um, basically curse the person who stole it from the temple where it was being watched over and worshipped, kind of. Then it takes us to the beginning of this book where this family, we know this family in England had had this diamond but at the beginning we know that it's been lost. I'm loving it so far. I'm only like 30 pages into it. I just just started it like last night. I, it is so wonderful to return to an actually well-written book after reading not great books. The Cruel Prince, I'm looking at you. Um, but this is just very skillfully done. The voice of the first perspective that we're reading from is so unique and I've already been giggling while reading it. I think it's just, it's just so well done and I can't wait to hear from and read from the next few perspectives because I feel like they're gonna all have really unique voices. So I'm really excited about this. I'm really enjoying this so far.
so we are back in the same place that we filmed the intro. I'm drinking some boba. I love boba. They never put enough boba balls in there for my liking. I have things to say about this book. Or is it focusing? So, The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, which is a Victorian novel. Um, I've never read Wilkie Collins before. A lot of people on YouTube, on BookTube, really like him, really seem to like him. Um, he writes sensation novels, so mystery thrillers of the time, basically. I was expecting, what was I expecting from this? Well, let me tell you what it's about, actually. So the Moonstone is about a famous stone called the Moonstone. Um, it's like an Indian diamond, and it has this long history, and it's supposed to be kept guarded in a temple by Brahmins, and the diamond got stolen by an Englishman, and it is brought to England. The diamond in history had been cursed. Basically, whoever has possession of the diamond when it's not being guarded in the temple um, is get cursed, and the whole family is cursed when they have this diamond. So a family in England has the diamond. Uh, some men from India are coming to kind of get the diamond back a little bit. There's a little bit of that going on. A man has the diamond. He p dies. He, in his will, gives it to his niece. Basically at her birthday party, the night that she gets the diamond, it goes missing. Someone has stolen the diamond. And this whole book is about trying to figure out of who stole the diamond, basically. And we hear from five different people um, and it's their account of the same few nights, few months, kind of surrounding what happened to this diamond. They're trying to figure it out. It's all these stories of these people and their relationships and connections with each other. This book, it was really refreshing when I started reading this because I love reading books from this time period. I love the Victorian time period. Um, I love the dense, beautiful language that you find in a lot of classics, but definitely in the Victorian period. It was really interesting. It was really delightful to see, to read Wilkie Collins for the first time, and to experience an author that you could tell really knew what they were doing, and they had really a great hold on their characters. All of their characters, all the characters in this, had such a unique voice, and they, you couldn't, confuse any of the characters basically as each of them were speaking to you they had such unique voices and perspectives and characters and that was really neat that was really neat to read I really enjoyed that however a couple of things I got very bored well while reading this I got very bored I'm not much of a mystery thriller reader at all actually I'm not at all a mystery thriller reader with modern books so I don't know why I thought I would really like them in a classic. Anywho, I tried it. I was, I was just bored. I just didn't care that much. I feel like for me when I'm reading a book that it either has to be a really addictive, fast-paced plot for me to be invested or it has to be kind of meandering and philosophical. And there weren't really any philosophical points to this too, too much. I mean, maybe some lines here and there that I underlined that I liked and enjoyed. There were lots of references one of our characters, our first one, um, the butler, Mr. Betridge, I think is his name, he really likes Robinson Crusoe, so he reads Robinson Crusoe a lot. So there were a lot of allusions and references to that book that I did enjoy kind of picking up on and kind of the contrast between, because I think in Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, that book's largely about the contrast of good and evil, right? And the impulse of human survival, essentially. And so that had me thinking about how just the whole concept of the curse of the moonstone, how the evil really is greed, you know, when it's something that is worth so much money. I think that the, the curse that comes with the diamond is oftentimes just greed. That was pretty much the, only, the main thing that I got from this. Personally, I don't know if that's what it's supposed to mean, but that's what I got from it in my reading experience, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's definitely an object of its time. It, it just had an interesting perspective on, like, Hindu culture. So, you know, it's definitely an, a, an, a product of its time. I didn't necessarily love. There were two, in my opinion, main female characters. Well, there were a few main-ish female characters. Um, but two fairly major main female characters. We had Rachel, Miss Verinder, and then we had the maid who used to be a thief and I'm completely forgetting her name and I apologize. But I didn't 
like the way that some of the women were, were talked about and the language kind of around them and I don't think that this was particularly kind to bodily difference. I just didn't care for it. It took me out of the reading experience. I don't want to say it's funny because because it was inappropriate. It was inappropriate. That was interesting to read. Also, there was one of the characters in a letter she wrote to a, a different character. This is the maid. She was describing, or she was saying, she just didn't speak kindly about the other female character and I really didn't like it. I'm gonna read it to you. It's on page 304. If she had been really pretty, if she had been really as pretty as you thought her, I might have borne it better. No, I believe I should have been more spiteful against her still. Suppose you put Miss Rachel into a servant's dress and took her ornaments off. I don't know what is the use, what is the use of my writing in this way. It can't be denied that she had a bad figure. She was too thin. But who can tell what men like? And young ladies may behave in a manner which would cost a servant her place. It's no business of mine. Um... Basically, she was like in love with this guy who was in love with Rachel and she's just kind of speaking poorly about Rachel and that's just a little piece of it, but she kind of goes on for, for a little while. I just didn't really necessarily care for that. Also, there was a trigger warnings. There was a suicide in this and how do I say this without spoiling it? I didn't like the way that certain plot points happened. Or, or why they were happening. I just don't particularly care for this book, but I, I don't think it's bad by any means. I just don't think it was for me at all. And there really, really wasn't much about it that kept me into it. I was saying in the beginning when I started that it was actually really funny. The, the first person, Mr. Betteridge, was pretty funny. I enjoyed being in his um, perspective the most. And that's all I really have to say about the Moonstone. I don't think I'm gonna read any more Wilkie Collins. I just don't necessarily have an interest. So yes. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your morning, evening, noon, or night. Tell me what you read in the month of October. I'm curious. I don't think that October is like my reading month. I'm not like a spooky person. I'm not a spooky person. And that's okay, okay? Again, have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye.